What's going on everyone? Oh, man, my back still hurts. Uh, today, we are going to work on the brake system. I don't know why I'm talking so slow. Today, we're going to work on our brakes for the travel law. So in the last video, we got the pedal assembly mounted. Uh, so this video, we want to continue on with mounting the booster and then building the hard lines. And then I'll go over some of the uh, hoses I have. Let's get started. So if you remember the last video, I was working on trying to get the dash in here and we're waiting on some AC vents now, um, but I can still get the pedal assembly um, bolted up in here so we can continue on with our brakes. So that sticks from the inside out. We got three studs to align. I did add that bolt there. That's slotted. This one wasn't. I don't even remember what's supposed to be there. I'm hoping I don't have to end up cutting that out of there. Um, but we have a plate that goes on this outside that sandwiches us it. And then the booster mounts on there. Here's our plate that goes on the firewall side. I decided just to do it in black. And then over here at mount pile, oh shit. There is the booster. It's underneath our column here. So maybe this thing won't fall. There's our gas pedal that I'm going to have to drill holes on a firewall for because I accidentally welded them up. Oops. And here's this heavy assembly. Good golly. So on this, I need to remove this bracket, clean it up, and I'll probably just paint this black as well. Probably look better at gray color, but I don't have a gray color right now. And if I hate it, we can change it. If you didn't see the video where I installed this, this is a kit for a 66 Chevelle, I believe. I bought it off of Speedway. It's eight inch dual diaphragm booster. Comes with the disc disproportioning valve. This is the factory mounting bracket for my travel. I just had to modify it a little bit. And I had to build that little eyelet to be able to make this work. There's a whole video on it if you want to check it out. Got this in paint, uh, starting to assemble it. Don't really have none of this tightened up yet. I want to take it and put it on the firewall. And over here on the firewall, just got this plate mocked up also. Uh, be sure to bring that rod up through the firewall. Well, I finally got everything uh, bolted up and torqued down. Unfortunately, I had to build these two lines. I lost mine. Um, that really slowed me down just because I looked everywhere in the shop, opened up all the cabinets, did some rearranging and stuff. Finally gave up. I just got done building these two. Hopefully they don't leak. Uh, now we're gonna start on our front lines. So on your proportioning valve, those are your two inlets. You got one going out the back of it that goes to the rear and then you'll have one on the bottom and one on the top and these are your two for your front brake lines so this brake hose i put on here i still need to add a retaining clip uh, right here but this one i found on ebay it has the banjo style back there and then goes to a 30 or a 3 16 fitting there and it's like 31 and some change long, I believe. I'll put some screenshots of all of these that I found, but I decided to use these. So we need to build a brake line and go from here, probably kind of run along the top right here, and then we'll kick up right in this area. And this is what we'll be using. I'm just doing 3 16 uh, both are disc um, brakes front and rear. That is a disc disproportioning valve and just 3 sixteenths. I think it'll be fine. So I cut us a piece here that should be plenty long. And because our fender wells do come down over here, I want this to 90 towards the top of this frame and then run back. So I'm gonna just start kind of shaping this one how I think we need to do it. But because we got a 90 so close right here, I am going to go ahead and uh, put one of the fittings on this end. 
and then we'll start to shape it up to this way. So I put a fitting on here. I'll show, show you how to do the uh, double flare here in a minute on the other end. Like I said, I, I know we need a pretty tight 90 on there. So that's what I'm just gonna go ahead and bend right here. Being careful not to kink it. With that end started, I'm gonna kind of turn it there and then end up giving myself a mark where I want to start to bend. And then we'll take it back off, bend a 90 curve there, and start working our way up there, which is our goal. all of our extra running that away so i'm going to start to pick this up and over here and then figure out how i want to kick up Crazy how easy a bolt will start when you tap it the right size. So before we get to here, I actually want to coil this thing a few times. And what that does is it allows that line to be able to flex. That way it's not sharp uh, bends and bent tight and has no room for uh, a little give to it, I guess. So I just grab a piece of pipe, whatever you have. This is about an inch and three quarter, and I'm gonna hold it there, and I think that'll be a good spot to be able to put about, you know, just a few wraps on it. So I said a few, but I guess technically two. And like I said, that just allows some uh, movement between the body and the chassis. So uh, Uncle Rick showed me that trick. Manipulate this till I'm happy. Which is about right in there. I think that right there is going to reach it good. So, this was a little short, so all I did was grab this and kind of tighten up this 90 down here where it's not so swooping and then you can kind of grab it up here because you'll go too far, kind of bring it back. And you can just kind of work it until you're happy. I think that'll work. To do the double flare, one, don't forget to put your fitting on. It sucks when you do all that and then you flare it. And hey, I forgot to put that on. I've done it. It sucks. So we're going to clamp this in here. And we want the end of that sticking out. This is for the 3 16ths here. And you'll see there's a edge, two edges there. Well, the one kind of in the middle, we want that sticking out the same distance as that, or the same height as that edge.
So hopefully you can see that. So we're gonna take this with that sticking down, put it in there. And I'm no expert at doing this stuff, guys. I've only really built brake lines before on the truck and none of them leaked. I did have a hard time getting one to seal on the proportioning valve, but I'm not sure if it was a proportioning valve on my brake line or what. Uh, so when I do this, I just run it down till it gets tight like that and I'm not gonna force it. Take that out. So you can see how that kind of pushes that end down, kind of balls up the end more or less. Uh, collapses the material kind of down on top of itself. Then you can see how this is at a 45 degree angle. So now we'll run that down in there, which will 45 the material. And because we have to use that little adapter first and then that, that's why it's called a double flare. The same with this one. I don't go super crazy tightening the crap out of it. Uh, also though, like I said, I've only done this on the truck and that's been over two years. So I really don't remember. Got that pretty tight, but I ain't going tighter. Uh, so I don't really really remember how tight I did that one. If I was really torquing the crap out of it then or not, I don't remember. Uh, so don't do this exactly how I am and be surprised if you have a leak or two, because I'm not an expert. But when you get done, you can see how that creates a nice flare there. So let's go install this bad boy. That lined up real well. All right, so we got our first brake line done here. So I didn't get this real tight down here because this is actually a little adapter for this uh, braided hose and I haven't tightened that up yet. But as far as being able to get it where we're going and overall shape, and I guess I just realized I cut that thing to perfect length because I didn't cut any more off of it. So we got lucky there. Thought I was gonna waste a little bit to be in a dead on target. So now I just gotta build the rest of them. Next morning now, and I got out here and I built the other the brake line for the front for our passenger side. So I started here and just threw a couple clamps along that cross member, kicked up over here, decided to share the same hole for this clamp. So uh, this other clamp, I had to bend it down a little bit in the vise to get it where I actually clamps it. Come up, had our couple coils there, and overall I think it looks pretty good. So now we're gonna do the rear brake line, which will come out of the uh, rear of our proportioning valve here. So I'm not sure I actually have enough brake line to build this rear line. We're gonna see. Uh, I kinda laid it out, and if it does fit, it's gonna be damn close. So that being said, I can't really waste any. So I flared this in. Um, I have our fitting on here, and I'm putting the coil for it immediately, right, uh, right behind the portioning valve so that was interesting because I actually spun it by grabbing the remaining length and having to work it around here but I got it so we're gonna start laying it out now on the travel all well damn it as you see right there I broke my tap so I was trying to get a bolt down let me move this real quick Right there, hopefully you can see. Uh, got it drilled, but broke the tap in there. So I decided to come up here, modify the clamp, step it out to a quarter 20 bolts since I have some Allen heads for those. Broke the drill bit in that one. So what do you do? Well, I mean, I couldn't get that out. So I stepped over right to the side and I'm just gonna put it right there. Um, kind of sucks, but is what it is. I mean, what? What do you do in a situation like that? Are you gonna pull the motor and transmission out to be able to get to it? I'm not. 
I would say maybe if you're building a SEMA truck, but if y'all seen some of the vehicles going to SEMA, this thing's actually built to the quality of some SEMA vehicles. And I'm not bragging on my stuff. So that's how it'll look, clamped right there. So do we know there's a hole there? Yeah. If someone's really wanting to pick this thing apart, will they see it? Maybe. But that right there is just the reality of it, of doing stuff here in the garage, me not knowing exactly where the brake lines were gonna have to go to clear everything, so I couldn't do them before putting the body back on and the engine in and everything. So it just, it is what it is, like I said. And now we're gonna keep going down through there and clamping that towards the rear. So we got the rear brake line done, going down along the frame rail. And I'll get underneath there real quick where you can see what it looks like underneath there. So it's not the prettiest job. Um, it'd be nice to have one of the tools that straightens out this brake line. But good enough for this thing as far as I'm concerned. Got it clamped down through here pretty often. Keep it from bouncing around. And then right up here. Uh... I'll show you this tab on the bench in a second. But this rear brake line kit, I got from the same people on eBay as the front brake lines. And I'm gonna try to show it to you guys. So the rear kit comes with that up there, that mounts, and then the stainless brake line obviously threads on up there. And then it threads onto this little T uh, block that comes with a hole in it where you can mount it to a rear tab and then um, it accepts two 3 16 brake lines as well. Pretty cool little kit. So I just tighten that stuff up. So now once I get some more clips, I'll knock a clip in there and this will all be done back here. You can kind of see the little tab I added right here and I'm gonna show you this tab on the bench now. So when I ordered the disc brake brackets, as I went to the checkout, they had these little tabs on sale and I think I paid a dollar a piece for them, but they're laser cut, nice and clean. And all I did underneath there was cut a little eighth inch piece, tigged it to this and drilled a hole on the frame and tapped it where that can mount to it. That way I didn't have to do any welding, but as clean as these are, um, to me for a buck, it's worth it. I bought quite a few of them and I'm just going to stock them on a shelf. And those are from Rough Stuff Specialties. They got a lot of good stuff if y'all want to check them out. So I welded one of those tabs uh, to the axle there. That's where my hard line goes to. Then there's adapter and just a smaller little flex line to this banjo. Um, I purchased these from the same people as well. And it's like that on both sides for our disc brakes here. Well, that's it for this video. Guys, all this brake stuff, except for the brake booster and proportion valve, I got off of eBay. The roll of hose is cheap. You can buy uh, whatever fittings you want for whatever line you got to run, whether it's the 3 16 quarter inch, whatever. They sell it with all different kinds of fittings and little kits. All the stuff is pretty cheap. Um, the flex lines you can find on eBay and all the little adapters for them are real cool. And you can buy those little tabs and I mean you have all the pieces to build a nice little clean brake system. Uh, I hope this video helps some of you people if you've never done this before. Um, it's not as scary as it seems I guess. You just got to kind of get a feel for it. But it's nice to be able to make one the exact length you, you want it versus buying one of the pre-made ones and having to use the slack up somewhere else or anything. So I hope you enjoyed the video. You got an idea of how it could help you. If you're new to the channel, please check out some of the other videos where we've built this thing. If you always come back, thank you guys for coming and watching my videos. Um, if you want to help me out, all you got to do is drop a comment down below, like or share the video, or subscribe. All those things help the channel grow. So I always appreciate it when you guys do that. If you're on Instagram, I'm on there at Puddin's Fab Shop. And I'll see you guys next time. But don't forget, sitting on your ass, don't finish your project. I'll see you guys in the next video.